Welcome to week 13 of Sabbath School Boot Camp. Our goal is to help you think creatively and critically about your Sabbath School lesson. This is the final week of Sabbath School Boot Camp. And at the end of today's lesson, I'm going to let you know how you did. This lesson is all about taking that step out of our comfort zone and following the example of Jesus. And we're often told what we need to do. We need to get out there and witness for God. We need to get out there and make friends for him. We need to pay tithes and offerings. We need to pray. Sometimes we act purely out of duty and we take spiritual shortcuts and force ourselves to do these things. And this lesson reminds us to keep our eyes on Jesus not in giving Bible studies or money. Giving money means nothing if your eyes and your heart aren't on Jesus, friends. If it isn't because of him and for him, then it is not service to him, and you will eventually get drained and discouraged. Sliding over to Sunday, we begin by reminding ourselves of who Jesus is, and there is perhaps no greater text to do this with than Philippians 2. Philippians 2 is a devotional gold mine. Jesus did not consider his divinity as something to be used to his own advantage, Paul tells us, but he emptied himself and took on the form of a slave. Beautiful. And this is the, the mindset that Paul calls us to have in our relationships with one another. The bottom of Sunday is a wonderful question. When was the last time you truly had to die to self for Christ's sake? It's more of a personal question. I wouldn't expect too many people to open up about it in class. But it's good to nudge your class members to answer it for themselves. Dying to self is exactly what Paul is describing in Philippians chapter 2. It is this process of Jesus emptying himself and becoming one of us. Dying to self is always going to be painful. It is the process of us emptying ourselves and becoming more like him. Dying to self is always a hard choice. It always hurts. But when you see Jesus, who in the very nature God, emptied himself and embraced this life, then what other choice do we have? How can we watch the innocent one suffer for our sakes and then we maintain our stubborn pride? This is why the life of faith doesn't work if we don't have our eyes on Jesus. If this, his example, isn't the thing that is motivating us, we will never naturally get out of our comfort zones. And if we are going to share the good news of God, we need to get out of our comfort zones. Moving over to Monday, we are talking about commitment. There is no meaningful commitment to Christ without first dying to self. Finley wants us to study the calling of Peter, Andrew, James, John, and Matthew. Jesus tells Peter and Andrew that he wants them to start fishing for people. And when Jesus calls Matthew, he says, come with me and start making money from people. No, wait, that wasn't right. What's interesting to me is that the call of Jesus is always a call to follow him, not a call to follow a list of doctrines, not a call to follow a church or a pastor. Jesus has called you to follow a person, and only one person, himself. Jesus will always find you where you are, and where he finds you is usually a familiar place, right? Peter, Andrew, James, John were fishing. Matthew was doing his tax collecting stuff. But once you've committed to following Jesus, he will always lead you away from that familiar place. And you won't know where you are or where you are going. You'll find yourself surrounded by Samaritans and, and high and mighty religious leaders who may intimidate you. Sometimes Jesus will return you to familiar surroundings. But the only consistently familiar thing that you can expect on this adventure will be Jesus. And this is why it's so important to know Jesus. Jesus doesn't lead us out of our comfort zone because he doesn't want us to be comfortable. No, he wants to be our comfort zone. He wants to be our safety net when things go crazy in life. And when you think about it, our natural comfort zones are often really poor coping strategies. Maybe our comfort zone is just staying home because we're too scared to go out. Maybe it's eating food we know we shouldn't eat. Maybe it's pushing people away. Maybe we do that in order to stay comfortable. Maybe it's just reading books. Our comfort zones are the space where we can reign as sovereign, where we can have some feeling of control over our reality, which we think brings us happiness. But when we look at Peter, Andrew, and Matthew, we see the great joy that comes from only from giving up the, the, the familiar and the comfortable in living on the road with Jesus. And Jesus' call offers us what our comfort zones cannot. It offered Peter and Andrew a chance to stop catching fish and start catching something that truly mattered. It offered Matthew a chance to stop being hated for being a tax collector, for always being the voice of bad news, always being the one to take, 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 take from people, and to embrace a life where you get to stop by people's house and give them good news, where you get to give and not just take from them. That's what the call of Jesus does for us. And when Jesus calls us, he asks for commitment. You have to be all in. And judging from the examples of Peter, Andrew, James, John, and Matthew, 
it's worth it. Now, trotting over to Tuesday, we consider the example of Paul. Finley says that God invites the most unlikely candidates to bear witness to his name. But I ask, who would be the likely candidates? There are no natural fits in the kingdom. Jesus has to change everyone whom he calls. Or as Dietrich Bonhoeffer famously said, when Christ calls a man, he bids him come and die. Or woman, you get it. But it's the drama of Paul's conversion which both attracts and repels us. That, that murderous intent, that bright light, that blindness, that invincible life on fire for God. Paul's story gives us hope, and yet, what does my calling look like compared to his? I mean, he's superhuman. He's a celebrity. He's that good-looking Hollywood star who got ripped for that movie. And you both admire him and also have never felt more distant from him because there's no way that could happen to you. He has all those good genes. He has a personal trainer. He has a chef. Okay, well, just stop comparing your story to Paul's. Paul is an example, but let's not take the example too far because we don't know Paul's entire story. Finley says that Paul never wavered from his commitment to give his entire life to Christ, but we don't know that, do we? Did Paul ever have doubts? Did he ever get frustrated at one point, take a year off? Luke's goal in Acts is to present a very sympathetic look at Paul, okay? Paul was always right in Acts, even when he might have been wrong not to take John Mark. It always works out for Paul. But my point is, we don't have a complete spiritual biography of Paul. It's almost all positive. So don't compare yourself to him, because our tendency is to underestimate ourselves and overestimate people like Paul. So you will always come up short. Look, God called you where you are, trusting that... Uh, that, that God knows what he's doing in your life, okay? Now, that's all we've got time for this week. We've had a fun time these past 13 weeks. But before I go, I want to invite you to like and subscribe to this channel so you will know when we produce more great content. It takes a lot of time and attention to run this channel, believe me. And if you found it helpful, then uh, I encourage you to go visit PeoriaSDA.org. Consider donating to our digital evangelism efforts. We'd greatly appreciate it. So how did you do in boot camp? I'd say you past, but just barely. So you'd better join us again next week for another fun quarter of Sabbath School Boot Camp. We're going to change things up. Obviously, we're going to get a new background and a new intro and stuff. And I also want to do more to help you as teachers, like adding some provocative questions you can ask your class to have a good discussion, uh, maybe sharing some more quotes and insights that are not found in the lesson that you can use. And if that sounds good to you, well, I hope you'll join me next week for Sabbath School Boot Camp. Dismissed! Dismissed!